Welcome to the finals of the ninth Intel Global Challenge at UC Berkeley. Are you ready to pitch? Yeah. Let me say that one more time. Are you ready to pitch? Yeah. I'm going to keep my remarks brief. You're competing for $100,000 in prize money today. And to take you through that process, I'm going to invite Manav Sabode of Intel up to the stage. He is going to be your MC for this morning. Here we go, Manav. Good morning. We need a lot of energy in this room. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, that's it. So welcome to the ninth annual Intel Global Channels. We are at the finals of this year's competition. Uh, it's, it's my great honor to be hosting you guys here. And we're going to have some fantastic presentations. So before you get on to the presentation, let me just tell you what really happened. So if you think that these guys who are competing today I've been really working hard. Believe me, that's not right. They've been having tons of fun. <laughs> we went to Stanford on Sunday, so they had a fantastic day at Stanford. Then they went, came to the Intel headquarters. It was our pleasure to host everybody, meet Arvind Sodani. They spent some time there. They went to the plug and play tech center, met some entrepreneurs there, got in touch with how the Silicon Valley really works. And yesterday was, uh, was the semifinals where they came and uh, did a poster session here. So it's, uh, it's a lot of hard work, what they have put in for the last so many years, but I'm sure uh, you all had a lot of fun here as you came. And uh, we have some new teams joining us from the Technology to Market Accelerator, so all of you are welcome. And, um, and we have a section from the press, uh, our business partners, uh, our associates, professors. Welcome to the finals. So as we get started, what we're going to do is uh, randomly announce the top eight finalists who have been carefully selected by the judges yesterday. So none of the finalists know that they are the finalists, so I'm assuming all 28 teams are here. And I'll go in random order, just calling one name till I go to eight, and you're expected to come up here and pitch. And as you do that, you know, uh, we'll be keeping time, so you're expected to pitch for 10 minutes. Uh, you'll be given a warning when you are at the last three minutes, three to one, and then you have to stop. And then we have uh, 10 minutes Q&A by our judges here. And let me uh, have the privilege to introduce our judges to you. So our first judge, is Sean Doyle from Intel Capital. Big round of applause for Sean. <laughs> then we have Steve Hahn from the Dow Chemical Company. Steve. <laughs> Sasha Johnson from DFJ VDB Aurora. Sasha. <laughs> Maura O'Neill, former CIO USAID. We have Deepak Natarajan from Intel Capital. We have Stacey Farmer, Corporate Affairs from Intel. Sara Peach, Siemens Technology to Business Center. Bill Riker from the Garage Technology Ventures. Bill. And Pradeep Tagare from Intel Capital. Great, so let's get started. Those are your judges. And let me now call out the first team. Okay, the first team that makes it to the finals is the team from Russia, Ibinom. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, and okay, one one more announcement. As as you do your presentation, there'll be uh, the marketing dean there. Uh, you'll just go and uh, have your team photos. There's a little video, and as you walk out, you just can meet the person standing on the right hand side. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Andrea. I'm from Russia, and I will present you my project, iBenom. It's a cloud-based genome analyzer. It sounds pretty hard, so that's why I will explain you by a story. Look, this is a high stack. It's about 100,000 straws in the high stack, and it can be one needle in a high stack. You know, it's very hard to find the needle. And imagine the very huge high stack with three billion straw in it and still one needle. And imagine that uh, the high stack with a needle became useless. This is a metaphor for the human genome with three billion letters in it. And one mutation, only one mutation, can, be, uh, uh, ca can cause the inherited disease. So it's very important to find a needle in a high stack. How can we do it? The first way we can try to find it manually. It's uh, not very easy, of course. It takes a lot of time. The second way, we can use some tools to split the high stack and to search in each part of the high stack separately. That will be easier, but it's still very hard for it. Or, or, or the third way, the better way, is to use the IBM solution like a magic box. You just put a high stack and we find a needle. So, how it works, how this magic box for inherited diseases works. Uh, the first step is uh, DNA collection and analysis by the special machines called sequencers. So, you put a DNA and uh, the sequencer gets you uh, 300 gigabytes of data. These 300 gigabytes of data came to IBM solution. So uh, the IBM solution by the first step sorts and analyzes this data with our proprietary algorithms. And on the second step, it generates report, uh, report with our findings, with uh, the, all the inherited diseases that we found in this, uh, uh, in this high stack. So of course, uh, we have some competitors. Uh, there is four main criteria uh, to compare uh, the solutions. The first criteria, does it work in cloud or it works as standalone application? The second criteria, uh, does it generate medical report? The third criteria is time and the fourth is price. Uh, so we work in cloud, we generate medical report, uh, we work uh, about half an hour and we cost about uh, Four hundred fifty dollars per one genome analysis. Our competitor DNA Nexus uh, worked in a cloud too, but it didn't, doesn't provide a um, medical report. Uh, it works uh, six hours, and uh, it costs three hundred dollars. Less result for the less price. Uh, so uh, there is a clone of DNA Nexus Pyrogenetics. It's the same, but it's more expensive. Uh, the third solution. GNOME is a service. You just uh, give, them, give them the raw data and they process it uh, for, to the medical report. It takes four weeks and it, take, it, and it costs $2,000. And the last solution is CLC Bio. It's an application. You just put it on your laptop and do your analysis. It doesn't generate medical report and uh, it takes uh, 24 hours per one genome analysis. Uh, and some special skills, of course, and the license is uh, $10,000 per year. So, our solution, iBenome, is a uh, web-based application. It can be works even on my iPhone. You can start the analysis by just push, push an Analyze button, and after pushing the Analyze button, more than 100 powerful computational nodes starts 
and uh, the whole process takes less than um, one hour, about half an hour, but it's more than 2,000 computational hours, CPU hours. And after that, you will receive such beautiful medical report with the statistical data in it, uh, statistics about raw data, is it good or not, and uh, our findings, found in mutations and uh, uh, the diseases uh, that is linked to this mutation. So, we're working on bioinformatical market, and we are waiting for the tsunami of data, with uh, uh, with the um, NTS sequencing become more and more popular to diagnose inherited diseases, and we can manage this tsunami. We can analyze all the data with our solution. Uh, we started our company in December, and um, we received some pre-seed funding uh, in March and release alpha version. After that, with alpha version, we do some market tests. We receive our first customers. And now we have uh, some paid customers, uh, and uh, we are looking for seed investments in Russia. We even signed a few term sheets. And our plans for the next year is to finalize the solution for inherited diseases and uh, to start working with another important uh, solution for cancer, so we can analyze uh, cancer genomes and uh, provide uh, the best uh, guess what, the, what is the type cancer is it and how to treat it. Uh, and uh, we, explain, uh, we, um, we will receive uh, a round in the next year. Uh, our company will become profitable after two years. There are some financial projections. And after four years, we expect to uh, earn uh, something about one million dollar per quarter on this data analysis. So, a few words about our team. I am CEO and co-founder. Uh, I was co-founder in the two uh, biotech startups before, and was a project manager in the first Rusnana medical project. Uh, our CTO, Alexey Brodsky, uh, he was a team leader in Russian Google, in Yandex uh, search engine, and uh, he has a very broad experience in big data analysis, machine learning, and he has a brilliant team of software developers. And our chief science officer, Valery Linsky, worked uh, in um, Zurich University and uh, University of George Washington with NGS data analysis and inherited, inherited disease diagnostics. Uh, and uh, this team is uh, quite stable and well-balanced. So we can revolutionize genomic with iBenome, and uh, it will be great uh, to present it here. Thank you. I'm ready for Q&A. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> and, and we're ready. We're ready to give it to you. Um, so first of all, congratulations. Tough job. First guy on stage. Way to go. Jumping up there and, and getting it done. So great presentation. Really appreciate that. Just a couple of questions to clarify. I'm a uh -huh. little confused. Um, it sounded initially as though you are doing the sequencing. And then later on, it sounded as though, no, you're not doing the sequencing. And which, which is it? Are you? No, we are not doing the sequencing. Okay. So who yeah. are you, who, so whatever third party does the sequencing. Yes, yes. And you pay separately for whomever yes. is doing your sequencing. Yes, so we're only a data analysis company. No okay, okay. So the assumption is, to start the 30 minute clock ticking, the assumption, the assumption is all of the, all of the data has been Downloaded. Corrected, uploaded to your servers. Yeah. Okay. So it's all up in your cloud at this point. And then you start the 30 minute clock, right? Yeah. Okay. What data are you using? The other question is what data are you using for genetic anomalies and polymorphisms? Who's, whose data sources are you using to identify 
inherited diseases, et cetera, et cetera. Because they're not, that's not, that's not your background and that's not your data, right? Uh, yes, we used some uh, open data, the all open genomes and the all open databases and some private databases too. Okay. And we use our machine learning algorithms to pass through this all data. It's about 4,000 uh, 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 cases and we analyze it all. And we, uh, with our machine learning, we became very precise to give insight about de novo mutations in this data and about how it links with inherited diseases. Okay, now not everybody agrees that, you know, about the patterns for every disease and every mutation and all that. What do you do when there's a conflict or there's uncertainty? How do you report that to the individual? Uh, so we just give them uh, results uh, for, you know, this, if this mutation is uh, connected with two or three different publications, we just give them all. And okay. uh, we give our score uh, earned by our machine learning that we have some black box with this uh, machine learning and we, we uh, think that this score is uh, more relevant than you know, some, some data from publications. Yes, please. Yeah, so I'd like a little more clarity on who the customer is. Is the customer a, a medical provider, an individual, a genomic counselor? Who are you selling to? Uh, so uh, our first group of customers is uh, medical centers that work with um, NGS data sequencing and they, uh, they diagnose uh, inherited diseases. And we can give them very simple solution that they don't need some bioinformaticians or so on. They just can, can give us raw data uh, and we then give them report. Uh, the second uh, group of clients is uh, sequence providers that can uh, add our uh, data analysis tool to their pipeline and uh, give not only the raw data, but give some insight with it. Not customers, it's only B2B service. I have a, I have a question about the, um, the patient at the end of the story. Does the experience of the patient change in any way um, using your technology versus what's possible today? Uh, so uh, about, uh, uh, I think I, I can talk about uh, patient stories but we, 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 we had some patients uh, in Russia. So uh, that was a boy with um, uh, some kind of muscular dystrophy. So we uh, made, uh, uh, they do the whole genome uh, sequencing for him. And we analyzed the whole genome and we found that there are some uh, genes connected, uh, some, some mutations connected with uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, Becker muscular dystrophy. So that's, and uh, after that, uh, he received the appropriate treatment. Would it have been impossible for him to have received that information using uh, current technology? Uh, sorry? Could, could he have received that information using current technologies, or would he uh, need your. Y y yes, system? yes, you could, but it's uh, like, no, it's like the first way. You, can, you should uh, look through all this data manually. It takes a lot of time, it, it takes a lot of efforts, and it's uh, quite an art. No, it's not a scripted uh, mechanics for this. Can you take us back to your competitive analysis slide? <clears throat> yes. So, um, I've noticed that you've got uh, certainly all the, all the uh, check marks against, against your competition, but aside from price, which is clearly a differentiator in the time that it takes and, and so on. If I was trying to make a decision about which one of you to choose, mm -hmm. would I choose it based on those four criteria or is there something about the analysis that you do that makes it more accurate? Because ultimately that could be worth a lot more than 450 and you don't have to compete on price if you're delivering more accurate data because this is medical information. Uh, yes, we deliver, actually we deliver more accurate data and we should uh, give this knowledge to market, but uh, right now um, uh, we are working on our publications about it and we are working in a contact of the uh, best uh, group uh, which develop in Harvard, which develop uh, uh, some um, algorithms called uh, Polyfan2, 
uh, and uh, we still need some time to validate it clearly. Right. That's, so, so that's our, uh, our uh, solution is much more precise. Okay. Than so is there a third party organization that can validate that? Do, can uh, they run tests against the data, I mean against the analysis that you provide versus your competition and validate that you have a better answer or a more accurate answer than the others? So uh, the, short, uh, the short answer is uh, no, because on this market uh, it's uh, very hard uh, to find, uh, there is no such organizations in this market and uh, uh, scientific people believe uh, in uh, publications and algorithms and so this market is not uh, very well regu regulated yet. So we should comply the CLIA of course, uh, but uh, CL I, I, uh, and uh, we comply it, but um, FDA uh, still is uh, looking on this uh, regulation market. There are no strike regulations right now. Last question. How big are the companies that you're competing against? Uh, How sorry? big are these companies that you compete against? Uh, so uh, DNA Nexus uh, two years ago received his C round about 15 million dollars. Gnome uh, received uh, See around about ten million dollars. Spiral Genetics was um, was a startup last year. They received something like uh, two million dollars. And Silsi Bio is a quite old company, software company, but it's not. Uh, it's very hard to compare between our company and them because they're a software company with a lot of products in their uh, software in the line. So that's it. Okay, one last question. Marcia, you had a question. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, the question actually was answered, but just to clarify, will the data you gather in Russia be relevant and applicable to other markets? Uh, Not just in the US, but in other parts of the world? Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, I should clarify that uh, we use not only Russian data, but we use open data from all over the world. The most uh, data from genome sequencing, like uh, 1000 Genomes project and some other project with exomes, it's open data and we use it all. So we use not only Russian population for uh, genomic testing, yes, but we use all populations and all races. And so there will be no problem with it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, here it is. The next team that makes it to the finals is the team from Bulgaria, Gimlion. <laughs> 